Welcome back to the Wolverine.com podcast, our video edition. We've taken a little bit of a break here, uh, Mr. Tom Crawford and I, but we're back at it. And uh, Tom, one, welcome back to the podcast. And two, hey, is there anything new? Nah. <laughs> you know, I just go nostalgic. Uh, you know, what Michigan basketball football was like 40 years ago. I want to do the history lesson or... Should we dig into something and see if there's something to talk about today? I think uh, we better go to the headlines. And that, of <laughs> course, means uh, Jawan Howard getting a rest of the regular season suspension, a $40,000 fine for the uh, the dust up in Madison. And uh, we know that others got nicked as well. We're going to have a couple of people on the Michigan side of things out of action against Rutgers. And uh, just a uh, a wild weekend. You didn't see it coming. I mean, you saw the frustration in the second half against Wisconsin, but to see the way that played out in the handshake line was uh, was a little shocking to a lot of people. Yeah, you know, in fact, this is a bit most one sided loss to Wisconsin in uh, I think uh, ten or eleven years. It's uh, usually Michigan plays Wisconsin tough if if doesn't beat them. Um, yeah, you know, obviously the second half was it, it unraveled for the Wolverines and truly unraveled at the end of the game. But I think this, John, I think this could be one of those galvanizing moments, potentially uh, turning point moments for Juwan Howard if he looks inwardly and and um, and and you know self scouts Juwan Howard and figures how he can make himself better. Um, anger management, I think, has to be part of that. He's an emotional guy. We we saw that at day one, JB. At the presser when he was introduced, he's an emotional guy. and uh, But you have to control those emotions. And um, I thought, in a nutshell, I thought the uh, uh, penalties, uh, the five-game suspension was was appropriate. I was fearing it would go the whole gamut into Big Ten play and beyond, whatever beyond is. Uh, but I think, it, I think it's fitting. Um, and as well as uh, the three player suspensions, Krabenhoff, the, 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 the assistant coach, the former player, I thought he got off scot free. I thought that was pretty annoying, uh, not mm -hmm. disturbing. And 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 Greg Gard, um, ten thousand dollars. Come on, that was ridiculous. I just heard Jay Will on uh, ESPN and about every other expert who I who I trust and believe in. Uh, not always all the time, but you know we're appalled by that as well. So hey, you know, move on, learn from it, and uh, see what happens uh, tomorrow night. With Mr. Phil Martelli uh, coaching for the Knicks five games. No doubt. And, you know, the guards penalty is not coming out of his pocket either. That's uh, the Wisconsin announced. No, that's a Wisconsin penalty. We'll take care of it and all that. Here's, oh, great. I, I wrote about this for our website. And I, I really think that the bottom line here, above everything else, you can talk about what instigated, what uh, what escalated, all that. Bottom line is, you can't take a poke at somebody on the court in the uh, in the in the handshake line and a layup line and any other line when you are the head coach of the University of Michigan or the, really the head coach anywhere else. Um, I, I think that that has to be the given here. OK, that has to be the takeaway. This can't happen again, I think. Uh, and I know that that Ward Manuel has emphasized that to Juwan Howard. and uh, But as you break it down, I don't think it ever does happen had not Greg Gard uh, stopped the blow-by that uh, Juwan was trying to execute in that handshake line. Um, you, can, you can have all kinds of debates about, oh, we shouldn't have called a timeout. And I, that, that stuff doesn't bother me. You got two guys coaching their teams to the end. Who cares? Juwan's upset, and he wants to do the blow-by handshake. We see that all the time. But when, when you got a guy that gets his hands up and prevents that, that's an escalation that you don't need. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think of Tom Crean, the former Indiana, the, uh, the engineer, the, you know, the LeBron James of the speed shake, the blow-by. Uh, gliding, uh, unless it was Tom Izzo, of course, and, and Tom Crean's probably going to get properly whacked here at Georgia, which will give me a little smile to my face. But anyway, you know, as far as, you know, Juwan Howard, yeah, that's 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 protocol. That's etiquette. That's expected behavior. If they're going to do the blow by, don't stop them. That's where it started indeed. But obviously, 
then all of a sudden you've ignited the engine um, and you know, it's a 16 cylinder engine and it's, and it's blowing up on and, and things got on hand. You cannot, you can't be violent in our society. Well, it's, it's happening, but I mean, you're, you're, you're not supposed to be violent in our society. And um, I, you know, this is, this is ultimate lessons learned when you got, and, and I really feel quite honestly, you know, I'm looking at the other players. I must've watched that tape, John. 30 to 40 times, different, different versions thereof. And I mean, Eli is a friend of, uh, is in front of Juwan. He, he's just going by. Uh, T. Will is like, you know, is, is like behind him, like what's going on here. I mean, or Frankie Collins. I mean, I'm looking at the players. They would not have been pulled into that if it had not been from Juwan Howard's behavior reaction to that. Um, but, you know, I'm, you know, and that, but that starts with Greg Gard and, and, you know, it's, but, um, I, I'm just ready for for the ultimate. Uh, let's get this behind us. Uh, a lot of basketball to be played, but I'm really concerned about the mentality of this Michigan basketball team, John. This could go one way or another starting tomorrow night. I mean, considering the schedule, um, I, you know, th there's been these defining moments in, in in Michigan basketball history. Obviously, 1989 when Bo said uh, he wants a Michigan man coach in Michigan, so Frieder gets gets uh you know pushed out the door or whatever early well that was his own cause but um and the galvanization of that team that was this could be one of those moments yeah too bad you don't have uh Bo to come in and speak to the team but <laughs> uh I, you know I, I i agree with you i think you have one big deficit tomorrow night against rutgers and that is the fact that you won't have musa diabate in that game uh, right. But at the same time, on the other side, you've got a gang of guys that are looking at each other saying, look, we can we can bounce back from this and we're going to do it right now. You've got a Hunter Dickinson who can who can say, hey, uh, play this thing through me. I'll feed it back out to you. We're going to we're going to play at an extremely high level. You'll have a fired up crowd, I believe. And, uh, you know, you have a, a more than capable coach in Phil Martelli. And these other guys, Saudi Washington. I mean, you you have a good staff that uh, you're not going to have some big drop off in terms of coaching. They they are a, very much a part of everything that goes on. So, you know, I think that uh, Michigan now they you understand Rutgers has been playing very very good basketball and beating a lot of good teams, but I think Michigan is going to be playing with a, a high level of emotion tomorrow night. Yeah, you know, emotion. Speaking of emotion, that's that's a wicked wild card in inter intercollegiate athletics. You just you never know where that sucker is going to go, and this is where leadership comes on that team. You know, it's like Glenn Rice led that '89 team, and some, and some other cats on Lloyd Vaught and Ramil Robinson. Who's going to be the Who's going to be that leader in the lock? That player leader of the you know they signs two players, but who's going to be that leader? Is it Eli Brooks? Eli Brooks needs to lead this team. And he needs to do it a little bit demonstrative, I, I would think, on the court. I mean, he's a coach's son. Juwan wants him to coach for him someday. Someone has got to step up to lead this team, I think. And I'm not optically seeing it on that court. I didn't see it in the second half at all in Wisconsin. No, and I, you know, I, I agree with you that Eli Brooks can be a leader in many ways for this team and he's certainly leading if he's making outside shots and playing the defense but it, the emotional engine for this team i believe has got to be the sophomore the big guy hunter dickinson because he has got such an edge to him that uh can really get attention in that uh, in that locker room in that huddle when he's demonstrative on the court He's taking everybody along with him. And I think that uh, over this these next few games, he's really going to have to assert himself and be a, a big-time leader. But I, I agree with that. That's a very, very valid point. But I'm telling you what, you need a leader in the backcourt. You really do. That, that That's the dude who's steering the engine, you know, is in the backcourt. And, and, and Devontae Jones, is he that guy um, coming in from the Sun Belt? I, I don't know. I'm not – I'm not seeing it yet. Maybe it, maybe it'll just all of a sudden this thing will just you know just blossom 
all at the same time, and Michigan will get on a little run and be a story that will piss a lot of people off, all the haters. You know, because it is really Michigan versus everyone. It really is. And this was epitomized like no other time. Because I've never gotten so many text messages, um, voicemail messages from my Michigan State friends who all of a sudden reach out to me like, what's going on? They were obsessed with this thing yesterday. You would not believe it. And it's it just epitomizes how much hatred uh, when, when something happens wrong with Michigan, Michigan State and other folks throughout the Big Ten has. It's Michigan versus everyone. And we're going to see that down in Indianapolis at the Big Ten tournament. Well, a couple things. I think, A, the players have to tap into that. It's Michigan versus everyone. Draw even tighter, get even more fired up when they go out to play, play with uh, the the most emotion they've shown all year long and uh, and, and just execute at a high level. You can't, you can't shoot the three. You can play out with all the emotion you want, but you can't shoot the three like <laughs> you did – that was constant and win anything. Yeah. And so no, not to a big team. Know no, that's crazy. Yeah, they're they're very capable. And I am I, let me let me, you know, you play it one game at a time according to the coaches. I wanna I wanna look ahead five games. I wanna look ahead at the Big Ten tournament because you had uh, people on our website noting that there's going to be great focus on Juwan Howard when he comes back. And I said I agree with that, but I think given Juwan Howard's personality in every single way that he can use that to his advantage. Absolutely. He is he is such a friendly guy for the most part. He he is he's got a great sense of humor. He likes to joke around with people. And that can be true uh before games with the officials, uh with the opposing coach. Uh, provided it's not Wisconsin, I, I, you know, that, that would be very interesting if those two teams met up in the big 10 tournament, but Juwan's got so many things going for him personality wise that he can immediately begin to rehab and restore the, you know, all the finger pointing that was taking place and all the, all oh, this guy doesn't, uh, th- th- he should be fired and all that sort of thing just by the sheer force of his personality. Yeah, and you got to, you know, uh, Juwan's had a really interesting life. I mean, you go back from his upbringing, uh, his grandma, South Side Chicago, and the whole thing, the Fab Five, all went through that, 19 years in the NBA, which is unbelievable. Um, and and then coming here to Michigan and, uh, you know, starting to coach intercollegiate athletics that he's never done before. I mean, yeah, it, I totally agree with you. He He's... I don't think he's going to be – he's not going to be the issue. It's going to be the players reacting to the situation that surrounds their coach, I think, is going to be the issue. And they've got to figure out with, – with Hunter, back to back to the mechanics of the game, uh, when when someone has got to figure out how to score um, when, when they're doubling down on Hunter and he's rotating the ball. And, I don't, you know, I'm the mid-range jumper. Um, and I am totally mystified by this. And I love Juwan Howard. I really, I mean, I, the post game presser, Juwan Howard, Jim Harbaugh. Are you after a loss? Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? The comparison. Juwan Howard takes defeat with the media way better than Jim Harbaugh ever does, and and actually treats people, the media, with some respect in the questions. Okay, I'm going to make that statement right now. Jim Harbaugh needs to remedy that, in my opinion. Okay, but I'm I'm telling you, what, someone has got. Someone has got to figure out how to manufacture some some offense. And I think Kobe Bufkin might be that guy. Because Caleb Houston, I'm sorry, John, 34 minutes, 2 of 9, 2 of 14, 6 points, maybe 4 or 5 boards. Where? Wh- how do you rationalize that many minutes for this kid? How do you do that, Juwan Howard? I don't understand it. I haven't understood it all season long. Well, I think the the probably the rationalization is you had a streak of uh, half dozen games in there where all of a sudden he's hitting the shots and it's looking mm. like a million bucks. And you're thinking, okay, maybe the kid Very is starting to turn the corner. But I agree, he has slipped back when he's when he's shooting two for nine. Uh, he is not tough enough. He is not strong enough at this point 
to uh, to play at a Big Ten level if he's not shooting the ball at an extremely high level. I mean, it's it was like uh, you know uh, an early uh, Duncan Robinson. If he's missing shots, you you wonder, oh, well, what's he what's he giving us? Right. Um, but when he is, it's a totally different story. You were talking about how they play out of those double teams. I mean, look at what they did uh, against. Purdue and look at what they did in these these games that they won big. Hunter Dickinson is a great passer out of a double team and uh he's got that cross court pass but if you're not hitting the shots then it it doesn't help you winning. Uh that was thankfully for Michigan an aberration the way they shot the ball from 3 against Wisconsin. They're capable, they need to pick it back up. There's no better place to do that than at home against Rutgers. Yeah, and, and you know, so my feeling is, I mean, Brandon John's down to four or five minutes, okay? But when Brandon's in there, at least he rebounds. He rebounds. He's contributing something in a positive way. You know, and 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 Caleb, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, Caleb is, you know, a fine young man. I've talked to him a few times. He, I, I think he's he come, hopefully coming back next year and and, and remedy some of the, the, the weaknesses to his game, and I think he'll be fine. But I'll tell you what. I would I would back him down, and I've talked to several former players about this. Back him down in his minutes, and give those minutes to somebody else, like a Kobe Bufkin, or maybe get Brandon in there to to defend more. You know, I don't know. Maybe get him into a flow. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe Frankie Collins. I don't know. Go small. I don't know. But you got to do something to do to to, to change this thing up because it's it's not working moving forward. And and you you think about that Illinois game on Sunday with all the alumni, all the alumni players coming back. That's a big opportunity, a big opportunity. Yes. And, and Musa is going to be back for that, and T. Will. So um, they win this game, somehow beat Rutgers, get some momentum going into that game. They, they, could, they could right the ship real quick here. Yes, they could. I just don't – I mean, boy, it seems like Illinois is a tough matchup for them, although they played pretty well. They played pretty Seattle. well against – yeah. Yeah, they really scrapped. Uh, you, you were talking about – whether you know Caleb Houston comes back, I don't think he's going to have any choice about that. I, I just yeah. don't see, given what he's done as a freshman, that uh, that leaving would even be an option. Uh, I'm almost in the same mindset for uh, Diabate, who everybody after the last game prior to this one, when he scores his career high 28, says, "Oh boy, he's gone after this year." Then he turns right around and and disappears against the Badger. <laughs> There's a real inconsistency there yet, and I know you're talking about potential, but I think you're onto something though. In uh, in Kobe Bufkin getting more minutes, he's he is a classic freshman in terms of he needs to go to Camp Sanderson, he needs to get bigger, he needs to get stronger, but he's got some really good elements to his game, and I think that's going to get better and better. So yeah, he yeah he got he had a poke jam off that break. That I, you know, he's got he's got elevation, um, and and he's and he's skinny as hell, okay. But I, he's skinny tough. I mean, and and I I think he's going to be a a good contributor moving forward, John. Definitely. All right, and in the meantime, when uh, basketball has blown up in terms of attention, not just <laughs> on sports shows, but on uh, on news segments throughout the country, uh, somehow spring football started on us and slipped in there and we would be remiss to not to uh, not take a look at what is has happened because as i said we haven't talked in a while uh, at one point the head coach was gone to the minnesota vikings uh you lose both coordinators uh the head coach is back in place but and i think that given the circumstances they did a pretty admirable job of patching those holes when you're talking about a Jesse Minter from the same gene pool as Mike McDonald, uh, a, a similar defense that you can install for these young guys. And then you look on the other side of the ball to the promotions that they made in terms of the offensive coordinators and how they're going to call the shots there. I think they really mitigated the damage and the damage could have been just devastating. If you uh, if you lost Harbaugh and lost that staff, 
Oh, no question about it. great point, John. You know, uh, during all that uh, Harbaugh flirtation with the Vikings and where, uh, you know, from from Black Monday on and all that stuff, that tango that we seemingly do every year, uh, my biggest concern was the staff, keeping the staff. This is a hell of a staff. Uh, Sans Josh Gaddis, this is a hell of a staff. And um, I, when I think about this offense coming back, you know, as spring – Spring ball started yesterday. Uh, last week, it's starting to kick around. You know who's coming back. Who, you know, on, on offense and defense and things like that. I think of that six, that six player core on at the receiving core. I mean, Ronnie Bell, AJ Henning. You got you know Andrew Anthony. You got Roman Wilson. CJ's back. A same is still. I mean, think about that. And my only other thing that I'm and I know this is probably might irritate you because you and I differ on some things in this world, and I think we have a little bit different perception on the quarterback situation that's healthy. jj mccarthy that's healthy. has to that's healthy hey healthy is good uh and friendship is strong but jj mccarthy has got to play this year if you want that ceiling to rise you know if you want to get to the cfp maybe you compete with ohio state but if you want to go to that next level you're going to have to have jj mccarthy driving the bus and not Kay mcnamara in my humble opinion all right, and my response to that would be it would have taken more than J.J. McCarthy to beat Georgia last, uh, last hey, year. Come. No question it. about it. And, and the other thing is, uh, Cade McNamara, and I get this is a minority opinion, but I will say this. Cade McNamara and Denard Robinson have one thing in common. What would that be? Uh, just fire it at me, John. I'll take it. I'm ready. They're the la they're the last two Michigan quarterbacks to beat Ohio State, and okay. uh, that's, that, that's that's fine. In itself, is no small thing. And uh, Cade McNamara did enough to uh, to rip through that season, and uh, with a little better luck and a little better uh, help from uh, on high, uh, they beat Michigan State and really have. Uh, uh, it was an exceptional season anyway, but to beat Ohio State at the end, to finish like they did, you had a quarterback who knew where it was, where to go with the football, knew when to to uh, avoid it, when to throw it away, and I think that is an underrated trait of Cade McNamara as we're going forward. I'm wondering how they're going to uh, manage this whole thing so that uh, you may still have a two quarterback system. You may have it where, uh, the, the number two guy last year edges ahead and what happens yeah. then. So I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. That'd be good. That'd be good. You know, don't make this 80, 20 Cade McNamara to JJ McCarthy. That's insane. This is a waste of talent. If you want to take it to the next level, when you're dealing with that speed of that front seven at Georgia Bulldogs and those seven, those, you know, 17, five stars and that kind of speed, we saw that speed. It was men among boys. J.J. McCarthy at least has a fright, fighting freaking chance to escape, whereas K. McNamara was just like, I mean, I'm just taking. I mean, I'm just getting blown up. I mean, you have to go to that level, John. You got to have more, more foot speed at the quarterback position, in my opinion. All right, and to go with that, I'll say you need the maturity so that you are, if, you're, if you're under too much fire, you'll do the K. McNamara and throw it away as opposed to throw it up for grabs. And I'm not no. saying that, that that's J.J. McCarthy, but it is a lot of young quarterbacks. So, um, well, yeah. Uh, what about the defense, though? That's, uh, I, I mean, you got a real rebuilding project there with uh, both those rush ends gone, with so many uh, guys out. You've got, you got talent over on that side, but they're starting over in a lot of ways. Yeah, they are. I mean, when the book ends, my God, can you imagine, you know, that Aiden Hutchinson uh, and, you know, uh, and, and uh, uh, David Ajabo? I mean, it, it, it's going to be a, 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 a huge void. There, there's no question about it. But I, I do like a, a couple things. Um, I, I like the secondary, I, you know, and maybe maybe I'm getting twisted up in the new guy, Will Johnson. Um, and how good he potentially, you know, could be. But R.J. Moten, I mean, you know, Jamon Green, I mean, you got um, um, I'm Rod Moore, this, you know, number 19. Um, he's going to be a really top-notch player. I, I think there's enough ju or in Junior Colson. I think there's enough integral parts coming back for leadership. Um, but you now you got a new regime, um, you know, I'm a similar regime to what it was because it's the Baltimore Ravens' footprint. 
on it on that defense. But um, it's it's in Mozzie Smith. Can he be that? Can he have that year that we've been wanting him to have since his freshman year um, when he signed on? I mean, there, there are a lot, just a lot of issues. You're right. It's the defense. It's the wild card. And the thing about it is, John, we're not going to have any flipping idea how good they're going to be until we got October because you got that soft home schedule. And when you go to Iowa City, I guess that's the time that you find out how good this Michigan defense is. And my thing about the uh, the beauty of the 2022 schedule, you have time. You have time to see what you got. You have time to get it more ready for Iowa City. And you've got more time for that defense to, uh, to find out who's going to be the guys doing it, for that offense to uh, really get to a high level. Uh, I, I like the way this schedule sets up. Well, the the pro yeah, I know, I know that's a valid point. Okay, but the problem is you don't know how bad you are until you're you're thrown into Kinnick Stadium. You've been there. That's a bull ring. All of a sudden, oh God, we do have issues. Well, it's a little bit too late to find that out. And when you play all those, you know, three, you're not even playing a Power Five in your non-conference, and they're at home. That's disgusting. It's disgusting to the fans. I don't understand how that happens. I mean, at least Michigan State's going out to. Seattle to play Washington like Michigan was going to a couple of years ago. I'm really, really disappointed in the home schedule. And if I was a season ticket holder, I go, good Lord, what, why, why are we doing this? Why are we freaking doing this? So I, I think there's going to be, I, I get your point about, you know, getting, you know, getting everything polished up on defense, but all of a sudden you're going to find out, good Lord, we, 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 we forgot that part against Iowa city, you know, in, in Iowa city and, and in beyond. All right. Well, there's plenty to talk about. We'll keep talking. The big thing right now is Rutgers at Michigan tomorrow night. Uh, Tom Crawford, uh, thanks for joining us as always. And we will do this on a regular basis going forward. Always a pleasure and honor to be on with John Borton on the Wolverine podcast. Until next time, JB.